here to speak with uh, Bonnie today about Obi-Wan Kenobi and Star Wars in general. How are you doing today? I'm very well. And you? I'm very well as well. And again, I love Star Wars. So I'm happy to speak with you today. And I'm sure you're very happy to return to the Star Wars world because your last appearance was Revenge of the Sith. So what was your thought process of uh, being called back to join Obi-Wan Kenobi? I mean, I was kind of hoping, like there were rumors going around for years and I was thinking, come on, come on, they got to bring Baru back. Um, so I kind of, I was hearing rumors and, and hoping for a while. And then when I finally heard that they actually were bringing me back, of, of course, I mean, happy was an, is an understatement. It was, yeah, through the roof, just so excited and grateful. Yeah, those rumors has been going on for at least the last few years. And exactly. I'm sh pretty sure that not only that you also heard those rumors, but you're also like, hey, um, is this true or am I going to come back? So was those thought, was those questions also running through your head? Of course. And I, I heard Ewan saying that he would love to come back as Obi-Wan. And I think Joel Edgerton was also saying, you know, yeah, I'd like to come back as Owen. Um, so and the fans were always asking me at conventions and stuff, you know, do you want to come back? I'm not sure who would say no, but. <laughs> I was like, yeah, of course. <laughs> but I think the rumors were going on for like a good 10 years. Yeah, about a decade. I was, 10 years ago, I was about 22 and I'm 32 and I st still often hear rumors about Star Wars, but are you pretty surprised how big the franchise has gotten ever since Disney got their hand on it? Yeah, I mean, I guess it always had that potential and that hype. Obviously, you know, even when I got involved, it was a huge thing and so many people were so so excited about it all around the world um but yeah it's definitely expanded I mean there's so many films and tv shows and animations and and the comics and everything I mean it's it's a massive world so yeah I am surprised so I'm glad I'm glad I get to be a part of this this part of it now for Obi-Wan Kenobi um, tell me some of um if you can some of the characters we'll see you interact with um, depending on who you can say, who you can not say. So, so tell me which characters so, you interact with the most. So I probably can't say anything um, <laughs> other than you have seen um, in one of the trailers, or maybe it was two of the trailers, you could see like a far off shot of, um, of me with some people there. And I think everyone figured out that was baby Luke, or sorry, young Luke, he's not a baby anymore. And, um, and Joel Legend was there too. So, but yeah, I'm not gonna give any more than that away. Wouldn't want to spoil it. <laughs> totally fine with me. Now I'm um, heading back to the Star Wars world. Did you have to rewatch the prequel films, especially the ones that you were in to really mentally prepare to get back into not only this world, but also the fandom that comes with it? So I actually didn't watch the prequels. Um, I probably could have, I'm sure that would have helped to kind of get back in the, in the vibe of things. But, but I watched uh, Mandalorian actually. And luckily my husband is a huge Star Wars fan and he had seen all of Mandalorian and was so obsessed. So he kind of was my guide through watching Mandalorian and like, this is this character and this character and you got to look at this. And he was really interested in the technology of everything too. So he was able to kind of show me how some things worked and we watched the behind the scenes Mandalorian stuff too. So that was really fun. No, that's another segue to my next question. Um, knowing that you were also on the set, um, how much of the tech that you saw over there that really surprised you? Because when I saw the behind the scenes of the Mandalorian, I was very surprised that a lot of it was done in the studio and not in the open field. Right. Yeah. So again, I won't give away which settings I was in because then people will probably be able to guess, you know, ah, right. okay, then that's happening in the story. Um, but yeah, watching the Mandalorian, I was pretty blown away by how they use the volume and they can create incredible scenes. I mean, yeah, you would think that it's outdoors or, I mean, it looks like it's on some amazing <laughs> planet. It's pretty wild what they can do. Now also without giving too much away, um, what was your favorite episode you've been part of for Obi-Wan? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, um, you mean favorite episode of the, of Obi-Wan, the series? Yes. Oh, I can't say that either, can I? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it too much You'll away. just have to wait and see. I have it in my head. I'm very sure which one it is. I'll tell you after. How's that? That's totally fine with me. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> now, um, also, did you have any kind of conversations with um, Hayden Christian as well, since he's he's also returning? Yeah. So actually, um, I I bumped into him in the costume department, and it was just kind of a random meeting, and we hadn't seen each other since we were filming Attack of the Clones. I think I think that was the last time we saw each other. Um, on in Tunisia for Attack of the Clones. So 22 years ago, that was 2000, we were filming. So we had quite a moment of, whoa, look, we're, we're both back here and we're doing this again. And actually it was really emotional. I, I think he was emotional too. I won't say that he was crying, but I was starting to cry a little bit. You so know, wait, that was, a, and... <laughs> that was the first time you <laughs> two see each other after all these years. I mean, did you know he was going to be on the set or you just happened to bump into him? <laughs> So I think maybe there were rumors at that point, uh, but I certainly, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't sure who I'd see and um, I won't give the storyline away either, but um, yeah, that was, that was really a surprise to see him in the costume department. And, you know, we were both starting to put on our costumes again. And that's so cool to come back around all these years later and step back into that. Yes. So cool. Um, <laughs> my next question uh, also relates to the series because we also had Amanda Gloria and recently the book of Boba Fett. Um, how different will Obi Wan be compared to the other two? So, I mean, I haven't seen the whole thing put together. Uh, I'm going to be just as surprised as everyone else. So, I guess that'll be a surprise to me. But I would say, you know, because Deborah Chow is directing this and obviously she did direct some of Mandalorian. So you get kind of her, um, her creativity in that. But Deborah really brings um, such an emotionality. Like she really, really connects with all the characters and the emotions of things. So I guess that's one thing I, I expect to see is really great um, character acting and deep emotional connection, which I hope is going to be really moving to the fans. I think it will be. Yeah, I, I'm very looking forward to Obi-Wan because this character we've seen all, not only in the original trilogy, but also in the prequel trilogy is very intriguing to me, especially with everything that happened in his backstory, along with what happened in those films. So right. <clears throat> that also segues me to my next question, um, since your plan is the lock of, <clears throat> sorry, the honor of Luke Skywalker. Um, did you have any conversations with Mark Hamill when it came to how these two characters would interact when you were first in the films compared to the, the series that's coming up? So I, I actually didn't have any conversations with him about that. I only met Mark Hamill once at um, a, a celebration. I feel like it was, I forget which celebration it was, one of the Star Wars celebrations. Mm -hmm. I think it was in Anaheim, but now I can't even remember. And um, And someone someone said, hey, that's your aunt. And so he, he turned around and was like, oh, you're my aunt. So that was kind of how we met. And then we took a selfie together and that was great, but we didn't actually get to talk about the characters really. So I hope that he feels that I've done justice to Aunt Beru. I, I hope he does feel that way too, because these are very big characters and the Star Wars universe is pretty huge. In fact, that goes exactly. to my final question since you've seen fans all over the world in the conventions and in the Star Wars space. Uh, any particular gifts that the fans gave you that really stood out to you? Um, you know, I think my favorite gift was someone gave me one of my action figures and they're kind of rare. So at that point they, they had just come out and I actually hadn't gotten one myself. And so someone who became a, a good friend actually brought one to me again at one of the celebrations in Anaheim. And um, yeah, that was really cool to see my little action figure. <laughs> and then they, I mean, they've brought amazing gifts over the years. They'll bake you cookies and sometimes they'll bring you different like costumes and things that they make themselves. I love that. Like paintings. I mean, they're so creative. Yes, I could. If, if I was on a Star Wars film or TV show, I probably would need a garage to fit all that stuff in. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes I've really had trouble bringing some of the, the things from conventions back. Um, you know, I'll go into a convention in Germany or something and someone will give me, me a massive thing. And I, then I've got the dilemma of how do I fit this in my suitcase? You know, <laughs> but you don't want to throw anything away. It's like, it's amazing. I had a great time speaking with you today. I'm looking forward to the series once it comes out. Thank you, Julian. Great talking to you too. Great to Can't you wait for you to see it. We can talk more about the details afterwards. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>